All right, you guys, uh, this is part one of Parallelograms, uh, module 1.4 in Integrated Math 3. Don't forget all your lessons can be found at mrmathblog.com. Just make sure you click uh, the Integrated Math 3 link at the top. All right, properties of a parallelogram. Okay, so our question here is what can we conclude about the sides, the angles, and the diagonals of a parallelogram? Okay. All right, this is another repeat of um, uh, IM2. So anyways, a quadrilateral is a parallelogram that has four sides. So there's a square, four sides. There's a rectangle. There's a, a parallelogram. Uh, there's a, just a quadrilateral, okay? Kind of looks like a trapezoid, but it, maybe not. I don't know. Anyways, a parallelogram is a, is a quad that has two pairs of parallel sides. So this is our typical parallelogram, but this is also a parallelogram, so is this because top and bottom are parallel, lefty and righty are parallel, okay? So here is clearly this is not parallel to this, so it's not a parallelogram, okay? So parallelogram right there. So properties of a parallelogram, okay? So uh, here we go. Um, opposite sides of a parallelogram are parallel. Well, duh. Okay, so these two sides are parallel and these two sides are parallel. And we note them with the red arrows right there, okay? Opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent, okay? So there's a picture of that, okay? Uh, opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent. So those, um, uh, both pairs, they have to be both pairs. These pairs are congruent, these pairs are congruent. If you just have one pair, it could be a trapezoid or it could be something else. So, but if both pairs are congruent, then it's a parallelogram, okay? And vice versa, if it's a parallelogram, then both pairs are congruent. The diagonals bisect each other. So here's a parallelogram. There's um, two diagonals. Um, so those diagonals bisect each other, and those diagonals bisect each other, okay? Consecutive angles of a parallelogram are supplementary. So what that means is this plus this is 180. This plus this is 180. 180, 180. That's what that means right there, okay? All right, so here we're going to prove the theorem. If a quad is a parallelogram, then the opposite sides are congruent. There are several proofs we can do, several ways we can do it. But um, this one's uh, found on page uh, 37 in our textbook, and we're going to prove this one in our textbook, OK? So given this parallelogram right here, we want to prove that uh, the top and bottom are congruent and the lefty and righty are congruent, OK? So here we go. Here's the pictures already given on page uh, 37, OK? <clears throat> so, uh, the given statement says it's a parallelogram, so let's go ahead and put that in there, okay? Now draw a DB, so through any two points where it uh, determines a line, okay? So to any two points, so let's go ahead and draw that right there. That's how come we can do that right there. All right, now this says AB is parallel to DC, so the top and bottom are parallel, and the left and right are parallel. Well, because it's a parallelogram, definition of a parallelogram right there. Okay, now ADB, let's follow this. ADB is congruent to, <clears throat> excuse me, CDB. Let's mark that right there. And we'll mark the other ones also. What kind of angles are this one and this one? and this one and this one. They're called alternate interior angles. And as long as those lines are parallel, then by the alternate interior angles theorem, they're congruent, okay? Now, DB is congruent to DB. So what we're gonna do is get this triangle congruent to this triangle and then use corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Easy, remember that? Anything equals itself by the reflexive property. Okay, now, angle side angle congruency theorem, look one arc to the side to two arcs one arc to the side to two arcs okay so by angle side angle those triangles are congruent let's get them in the correct order triangle abd so we went from nothing to the two red arrows to the middle side so we got to go nothing to the two red arrows to the middle side so c d b the corresponding parts okay so we got to make sure we're doing them in the right order okay so cpctc that stands for the corresponding parts of the congruent triangles are congruent all right Okay, so this is another proof. So we're going to uh, prove that the diagonals bisect each other. And we're going to get congruent triangles again, okay? So here we have a parallelogram right here. We want to prove that uh, this side equals this side and that this side equals this side right here. Okay, so the picture is on page... Um, 
39. So um, it's a flowchart proof. Okay, let's go for the easy points. Let's put this right here, and we'll put this right here. Okay, so it looks like we're getting congruent triangles again by angle, side angle. Okay, definition of a parallelogram says the tops and bottoms are parallel and the left and righties are parallel. So let's go ahead and put that in right there. Oops, so we just said top and bottom. Okay, we could have done this also, lefty and righty. Okay, and then it says opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. So we can either say this equals this or this equals this. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the top and bottom are congruent to each other. Okay, this over here says alternate interior angles theorem. Okay, so what I'm going to do, we got these parallel lines. We can say this angle is congruent to this angle and or this angle is congruent to this angle right here. So um, I'm not just going to say and or, I'm going to say and because they're both the same. So uh, angle ABE, ABE, so notice we went from 2 to 1 to the middle, so we got to go 2, 1, middle, so CDE, that's what that says right there, and BAE, BAE is 1 arc, 2 arcs, middle, so 1 arc, 2 arcs, middle, so DCE, okay? All right, so now we got congruent triangles, okay, because of angle, side, angle. So angle, side, angle. So just make sure you have them in the correct order. So we did A, B, E. So we did two arcs, one side, one arc. So we got to go two arcs, one side, one arc. So C, um, so this to this to this, so C, D, E, okay? And then, of course, C, P, C, T, C. All right, so here we go. We got a parallelogram. Find each measure, okay? So A, D, so let's find A, D. A, D is 7X, and B, C is 5X plus 19. Since it's a parallelogram, opposite sides are equal, so we get X equals 9.5. Okay, angle B. Angle B is congruent to angle D, so these two angles are congruent, so we solve for Y. Whoops, I'm sorry. Boy, uh, classic error. It said find AD, so X is 9.5. Boy, I fell right into that trap. So we've got to find AD, so plug in the 9.5 into 7. 7 times 9.5, 66.5. Okay, so set those equal. Again, we're, this is looking for angle B, so once we find uh, uh, Y, we're not done. So 2Y, so Y is um, 11, so plug in 11 for angle B, and we get uh, 6 times 11 plus 5 is 71. Okay, so angle C. So now that we know that this is 71, this is the supplement of that, so it's going to give us 109 right there, okay? All right, so I got a little bit more. So we got another parallelogram. Find each measure. Find QR, okay? So QR is over here, so it's going to equal this side because opposite sides are equal. Once we find Z, we're not done. So Z equals 8. We've got to find QR, so we plug in 8 into 3 times 8 minus 4, and we get 20. Okay, find PR. PR is this guy. Okay, so the diagonals bisect each other, so x plus 9 equals 4x minus 6. So solve for x, we get x equals 5. So 5, so 5 plus 9 is 14, so that's 14. So 14 and 14 gives us the whole segment of 28 right there. All right, you guys, if you're sitting in my class, that's going to be your homework. Take care, or your assignment. Take care.